Another way you can bless Him is to worship Him, worship Him, and worship Him. Get your worship one. Do what you were born to do. And everything in your life will change. And all the things that you think you need to do for Him will naturally flow from worship because it'll be Him doing it through you. Hey guys, this is Pastor Tommy. Thanks for joining us today at the church at Bushland. Man, we pray that your faith will be encouraged and inspired from today's message. Good to see you, church. Thanks for being here this morning. Um, So here's what I wanna do this morning. A couple weeks ago, I talked about the prayer of Jabez. Kind of wanna, kind of wanna come off of that just a tad bit. Not a lot. I simply titled the message today, if you're in the titles and you take notes, how can I bless God? How can I bless God? What does it mean for me for us to bless God. What does that look like? What does that mean? 1 Corinthians 4.10, we looked at that a couple weeks ago. Jabez cried out to God, to the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me. Oh, that you would bless me. And I said then, how many of you like to be blessed? And hands went up everywhere. Amen? Because we love to be blessed. It is God's nature to bless. Every good, every good and perfect gift comes down from heaven above. Every good. So if it is God's nature to bless and he wants us to ask that he would bless us, what does it look like on the flip side when I bless him? Because if it's just one-sided, isn't it wrong? I said a couple of weeks ago, blessings come with responsibility. Not a word we like when we're young, not a word we like when we're old. But to be blessed by God is his nature if we just ask, but in return, there is something for us. So how do I bless God? Oh, what does it look like for me to bless God? Let's jump into this. In scripture, when God blesses man or woman, they are thereby helped, strengthened, and made better than they were before. But when man or woman blesses God, he's not helped or strengthened or made better off. Isaiah says that God neither tires or wearies. He never gets tired. He never gets weary. Scripture also says that he doesn't sleep, that while we sleep, he's working on our behalf. So how do we and what comes from us, these little, these little people that he made in his image, what comes from us blessing him if we can do nothing for him? Some would say it's pointless to do it. <laughs> mm, we're gonna see in just a little bit that it's very important that we do it. So what does it mean to bless God? If someone were to walk up to you, let's just say one of your children asked you, Dad, Mom, what does it mean to bless God? What would you say? What would you say? I hope after today, you have a lot to say. If God is perfect, and he is, how do I bless perfect? I'm imperfect, but he's perfect. I'm not holy, but he is. How do I bless him? To bless God simply means 
to praise him or to honor his name. It is an exclamation of the gratitude and admiration for who he is. Watch this. For who he is, not for what he does. Somebody needs to hear that. See, we still have rub the tummy and ask for what we want. If we get it, praise him. If we don't, curse him. God, this is me shutting down. Excuse me? Who are we to shut down? Who are we to shut down? We have it better than all his other creation. Hmm. You ever thought about that? So the Hebrew word translated bless in the Old Testament literally means to kneel. Not a posture you see a lot. In Isaiah chapter six, you see it. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Mm. I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. Mm. He said that after his robe filled the temple. <laughs> we just sang about it. What if I touched his robe? It indicates the idea of honoring the Lord. We do not add anything to him when we bless him. Yet, we worship him as an appropriate response to his greatness and his love for us. So to bless God means to recognize his greatness, his strength, and his glorious bounty, and to express our gratitude and delight in seeing and experiencing it. That's what it's all about. So here's what I want you to do. If you walked in with a Bible, that's a good thing. If you have a phone, you need to get to that Bible app. And if you don't like the Bible, bad Sunday to come to church, because I'm about to wear you out <laughs> with the Bible. <laughs> nobody, nobody can speak of his greatness and the honor do his name more than the word of God. So we're gonna read it, and we're gonna read a bunch of it. And I make no apologies for the number of scriptures that I have today. Okay, none, all right, none. So let's get busy. First is Romans. Go to Romans 1. I didn't even give the broadcast room to scripture because it was too late to give it to him when I got it. All right. Romans 1, look at verse 18. Here's the warning. Here's the warning of not worshiping and blessing him. And the wrath of God, in verse 18, Romans 1, 18. And the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godliness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities and his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. Mm. Look at verse 21. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. Mm. They neither, neither glorified God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. I want you to go to Psalm 150. 
go to Psalm 150. I don't have anything marked, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be going doing all this with you. Psalm 150. Some of you are racing the preacher, and that's good. I like that. Right. That happens every time somebody says, I beat the pastor to the scripture. Right. Psalm 150. I'm going to take for granted that everybody listening to my voice fits this criteria. <laughs> Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Nowhere in this scripture do you see these words. If your circumstances are like you like them, praise the Lord. <laughs> your Bible say that? It does not. When I look back over my life, very few days were exactly like I wanted them. But every day I breathe. So because of that, I was left with the greatest thing that God ever gave anything. Choice. Choice will make you or choice will break you. So in that moment, we are left with a choice. If I love him and I'm thankful for who he is and he is really who he says he is, if I have breath, my job, my responsibility is to praise him. Regardless of how I feel, regardless of my circumstance, regardless of my 403B, regardless of my checking account, regardless of gas prices, or the ridiculous amount of money they want for an egg that comes out of a chicken's butt. It is not up to me to worship that way. It's not. And it's not up to me to worship when everybody on Sancy drives like I want them to, or when the interstate in the one lane is moving like it's supposed to, and somebody doesn't understand that that kind of traffic over there needs to get to the right. I'm just saying we base a lot of stuff in life on circumstances, and one of the things that we base it on is, is worship. And nowhere in Scripture does it say that. Nowhere. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Psalm 8, verse 2 says this, from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Some of you are being hit in the mouth by the enemy. Greatest weapon you got is worship. Greatest worship, wor weapon you got. If he hits you, you can't hit him back. You worship him to death. You worship the enemy till he runs out of your house. You worship him in your car. You worship him everywhere you go. He put a new song in my heart. Then sing the song. Sing it. Luke 19, 40 says this. I tell you, he replied, if you keep quiet, stone's gonna cry out. If you keep quiet, he who I made in my image and gave choice to worship, if you don't do it, I'll get creation to do it. But I'd much rather have you. Let me ask this simple question before we move to a bunch more scripture. Is a rock having to do it for you? Right now, today, is a rock having to do it for you? That's a shame, man. It's sad when a rock giving God more glory than you are. More praise, more worship. Rocks don't go to heaven. They don't even have the opportunity to go to heaven. 
We do. Deuteronomy 8 says this. Deuteronomy 8.10. When you have eaten, <laughs> we do that well here, and are satisfied, mm -hmm. praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Simple, isn't it? Man. Let's go back to the word, not that we left it. Psalm 100. Go to Psalm 100. I started to read some of this. You can't read some of Psalm 100. Got to read it all, baby. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Hmm. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come on. In his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Go over to Psalm 145. 145. Let's hear him. I hear him. Keep flipping. It's a breeze. It'll cool you off in church. Just keep flipping. Man. Get hot in church, flip the Bible. Man. 145. 1 through 10. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another and they will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of your glorious splendor and your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing to the righteous, to, of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion on all he has made. All of you, all you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol your name. Mm, keep rolling, 96. Go back to Psalm 96. One through nine. Sing to the Lord. Come on. Who's supposed to sing? We just read a while ago, saints. Saints are those who are what? Born again. Not a sinner anymore. I'm a saint. All right? More scripture about that. I didn't mean to beat that down again. Just more scripture. Saints, you got to sing. sing. Sing to the Lord, new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord and praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare the glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among the peoples. For great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe the Lord's glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering. Come into his courts. Worship the Lord with splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. You get the theme? just continues to praise, continues to praise. Go to Psalm 103. Some of y'all are like, oh yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one, all right? Psalm 103. Psalm 103, praise the Lord. What am I supposed to praise? Oh, my soul. Mm. In all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Mm. Go to Psalm 104, just a page over or just a verse over. 
Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. Look at Psalm 1, look at Psalm 34, 1. I will exalt the Lord. I will extol to the Lord all times. I will praise will always be on my lips. When will your praise be on the lips? All the time. My, my praise will always be on my lips. Go to Psalm 113. 113. This is what my kids and I did. I took my kids to school every day. My wife worked at the school at that time. This was our verses going to school. Every single day, regardless. We just, they had to say it. They had to say it all the time until I got to the school. That wasn't very far. We lived in Saddleback at that time. Look at Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse two, let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forever. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sits, the name of the Lord shall be praised. Mm. Praise the Lord. John 4, 24 says this, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit mm, and truth. Go back to Exodus, way back. Go to Exodus. Go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20. I'm gonna begin in verse one. Subheading, simple, Ten Commandments. Number one, hmm, oh, so important. Look at verse, I mean, chapter 20, verse one. And God spoke all these words. That's enough for me. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Verse three, you, you, my people, shall have no other gods before me. No other God before me. Hebrews 13, 15. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips that confess his name. Let continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, praise his name. So, how can I bless God? How can I bless God? The options are many. You might, hear, might be here today and you say, well, we could love because God is love and he wants us to love. True. We can be kind. God is kind and he wants us to be kind. True. We can be compassionate. God is compassionate and he wants us to be compassionate. Yes. Oh, Jeff, I know. Forgive. God forgives me and has forgiven me, so I must forgive others. Yes. Many are the options of how we bless God. But I wanna invite you to understand something with me. If we're ever gonna bless God, the simple answer to that is, we gotta do what we were born to do. Let me tell you how it works. We gotta do what we were born to do, what we were created to do. And if you really only, if you really look at what we were born to do, there are only two options. You could argue one, but I made it two. If you're ever gonna bless God, you must be born again. Because God's ultimate reason in making you was to be in relationship with you. Simple as that. So if I am not in relationship with God, it is impossible for me to bless God. 
Because if I'm ever going to bless God, I must be born again. And when I am born again, I immediately bless him because I receive his greatest expression of love when he sent his only son to die for me, to take my place so that he might be in relationship with me, so that he might know my name and I know him. So I might be his sheep and he might be my shepherd. You might think, well, if I'm going to bless God, I, I should go to church. Going to church is a good thing. It is. He loves that. But see, too many times in this country, we take going to church as an automatic stamp for salvation. And that's why people are miserable in church. Because they think coming to church is going to put them in relationship with God. And all it does was make them mad about what they see in church. See, church can disappoint you. God never will. Church can give up on you, but Jesus never will. Church won't always love right, but Jesus does. Church may not always be enough for you, but God will always be enough. So don't run after church. Run after Jesus. Do what you were born to do. Because if you do what you were born to do, you can't help but bless God. So if you're here today, before I ever get to number two, and you're like, Jeff, I really want to bless God. I love God. I'm thankful for God. I, I owe everything to God. But you're sitting here thinking, I don't even have number one. I don't know a time in my life that I've been born again. I don't know. I've tried all my life. I've tried to be what I see in church I've tried to be what they say is a Christian looks like. But I'm tired, man. I don't even know if I'm getting there. I don't even know. I don't know. Some days I think I'm doing pretty good, and other days I think I suck. I'm sorry. You shouldn't say that when you're preaching, but it's just how you feel sometimes, you know? When, when, when does the wheel stop, man? When does me chasing something I don't know if I can ever grab stop? It stops when you stop. And you say, God, I need you, man. I don't know that I've ever met you. No, I don't think, I know I've never met you. And for the first time in my life, this morning, I didn't even mean to do this, God. I walked in here with this not on my mind. It's just June the 9th. It's just a regular summer, Sunday. And come to do this. But God, I know that I'm not even fulfilling the greatest thing you've ever done in me, and that is you made me for relationship, and I'm not in one. I don't know you. I know of you. I know about you. I know people that know you. They talk like they know you, but I don't know you. God, I'm not walking out of here today until I meet you because I want to do what I was born to do, and that's be in relationship with you. That will bless God. The second thing you can do to bless God is to worship, worship, worship. Everything flows from worship. We're supposed to forgive. Mm, nothing will drive you to forgiving like worship does. Called to be compassionate. Nothing will make you compassionate like worship. Kind, nothing like worship. Nothing. We were created for worship. Psalm, we just read it earlier, from infants and children, he has ordained our praise. See, we have to be taught to eat. You do. Mama's teach a baby to nurse, take a bottle, that's a fork. Now your hand, okay? We're taught to speak. Don't come out that way. You know what else we're taught? To work. <laughs> Used to teach to work. We're taught to work. You know what you don't get taught? Don't have to. Worship. I'm gonna tell you right now, you turn worship on in a baby's room, 
They can't walk, talk, chew, nothing. They'll worship. You turn worship on in that preschool, they'll jump for Jesus. Because we were created and born to worship. And some of us aren't even doing what we were born to do. We were born to worship. You know, I love mornings. Right now, for those of you who like it dark early in the morning, bad time of the year for you. Bless you. Fall's coming. What I'm saying is, about 5, 515, 520, it's a choir in my neighborhood. How about yours? We got birds, and they're on the clock, man. You can almost set it to your watch. About 5, 505, 515, you can hear them. They just start singing, man. So I'm getting dressed. I can start hearing them through the house. I get dressed quietly. I don't want to wake my dogs nor my wife. And about 5, 20, 5, 30, pretty normal for me, my garage door is coming up. My garage door comes up. Mm, that choir that I did hear just got loud. And I walk out on my driveway. I'm looking around. <laughs> every rooftop, every chimney, you got a bird. And every one of them got their gaze to the northeast this time of year because the sun's starting to creep on the horizon. And all of creation knows it. And they're worshiping. They're singing the most beautiful song you could ever sing at the highest pitch they can see. You might say they got a bird's eye view of the dawn of a new day, of a promise that they could not do, at a gift they couldn't give themselves. Scripture tells us, look at the lilies. They don't work, but oh, they clothe better than Solomon could ever get there. Look at the birds of the air. They don't work. They don't toil. Mm. But I take care of them. They get up and they worship because that earthworm that comes from that ground, they didn't create. That'll feed themselves and their babies in that nest, they didn't do. And in the distance, I can hear the leftover geese in the playa. I can hear the mallards and I can hear the frogs. And all creation begins to worship except one. Why are we the only part of creation that struggles to do what it was born to do? Why? We wake up to headlines, sports scores, our phones, who locked our posts before we went to bed. Shame on us. I'm not judging judging myself, ain't nothing better, nothing better than to fix our gaze on what we were not promised and give it up for a king worthy of our praise. Don't let anything else in all creation beat his most special creation to worship. The greatest gift he gave you and me is the gift that keeps us from him the most. <laughs> called choice. It's called choice. All other creation don't know any different. Not even given a choice. They just doing what they were born to do. And he gave you and me choice. And sometimes we don't make good choices. We used to tell Brett and Natalie, when I took off to school, make good choices. I say to you and me, from God, make good choices. 
Don't anybody, don't let anybody steal your worship because you're not guaranteed another day to do it. Not guaranteed another day. So in the morning, when you hear them birds, go join them. Go join them. And I'm gonna tell you this, you start your morning like that, it don't matter how they drive or what they say, it don't hurt. It don't hurt because you got up with the king and he walked with you and he's everything you need. So I wanna invite you as the church and me as the church to join his creation in doing what we were born to do. May we never, never, ever play second to anything else he ever created because it is, we are his most special choice. I'm gonna invite you to stand, church. So how do I bless God? How do I bless God? Do what you were born to do. Do what you were born to do. Number one, make sure you're in a relationship with the Lord. If you're not, ooh, you come to a good house for that. Altars open, ministry teams in the back. If you know that's you, don't miss him today. If you know him, another way you can bless him is to worship him, worship him, and worship him. Get your worship on. Do what you were born to do. And everything in your life will change. And all the things that you think you need to do for him will naturally flow from worship because it'll be him doing it through you. I'm gonna pray for us. Altar's wide open. Ministry teams are in the back. He's in the house. Don't miss him today. Father, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Thank you for meeting us right where we're at. You always know. Thanks for saying exactly what you need us to hear. Thanks for giving us the nudge that we need, the spanking that we need if need be, the hug that we need. That's all you. And so because of that, we trust you, we love you, and we respond to you right now. Holy Spirit, draw your people to an encounter with a living God that'll change your life forever. For this is my prayer in your name. Amen, amen. Do what you were born to do. Hey, thanks for joining us today here at the Church at Bushland Online. Hey, if you were inspired by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. Just drop a message in the comments or you could email us at info at bushland.com. We'd love to hear what God's doing in your life. Also, man, if there's anything we could agree for in prayer with you guys, just text the word pray to 806-557-1800. We believe there's power in agreement um, with the Lord. And so um, if we could pray for you, just do that for us. Um, and if you'd like to connect further with us through social media, uh, just search the church at Bushland. You can find out more things that are coming up here um, and get involved that way. And then if you'd like to plan a visit, uh, we'd love to see you face to face. We have services here, 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m. every Sunday. You can go to our website, thechurchatbushland.com and plan that visit. And we look forward to meeting you that way. Finally, man, just thanks again for joining us. Pray your faith was encouraged and we look forward to journeying with you in the days ahead. So have a blessed day.